I'm back from holiday and sadly all alone this week as Ruby is on a call looking after our wonderful customers. But not to worry, I've got some fantastic early years news coming up for you right after the, the intro, the thing, this. Our first story this week comes out of the Labour Party conference. Now, this is the chance for the Labour Party to make some pledges about what they might like to do if they got a chance to be in power. And there's some interesting stuff relating to the early years. The big marquee news from Angela Rayner, the Shadow Education Secretary, is their plans to completely scrap Ofsted. Now, they plan to replace it with a two-tier system whereby local authorities do sort of health checks, more lighter investigations on a, on a continuing basis. And if they see anything slightly untoward, then it would be a more in-depth investigation would follow that. Um, the idea is that, as she said in her article with The Guardian, she said, I believe Ofsted measures poverty, it measures deprivation, it doesn't measure excellence. I think her point here being that quite often the social situation in which a, a, a school or a nursery is in often can have an in a, a bad effect on their rating, and Labour want to change that. And it's a bit controversial, of course, massively, although a lot of the unions are quite into it because there's obviously a long-running dispute between the unions and Ofsted and all the pressure on the teachers. I think it's a bit of a concern to be passing so much over to the local authority given that we know how underfunded they are are they going to be able to do it and you know are we replacing the devil we know with the devil we don't hard to hard to know until we hear more details during the speech angela rayner also reiterated some of labor's existing pledges that we already know about such as extending the sure start um, to what they call sure start plus opening up more centers and the extension of the free funding down to two-year-olds as well now this is of course a concern when we know how badly the existing funding has gone from three to four-year-olds but she did talk about making sure it wasn't going to be childcare on the cheap just to get parents back to work. Uh, and we know that Tracy Brabin, who's the shadow minister for early years, does seem to have engaged a lot with the sector and understand the issues. So we can at least be hopeful that if they do come through with this pledge, it would also come through with increased funding. Our second big story of the week is all about the EYFS. Now, in anticipation for the changes that we know are being looked at right now for the EYFS, 12 early years bodies have come together to bring out this academic report called Getting It Right in the EYFS. It's the usual suspects, you know, early education, the NDNA, the Early Years Alliance, PACI. So in the report, they've said that we need to understand that any change must take into account that what we already have is a world-class framework. They've made four points that need to be considered by anyone making any changes, that we need to recognise the central importance of the characteristics of effective learning, that the prime areas need to stay as such and not be moved, and the idea that they are foundational for everything else, that all areas of learning are interconnected, and that no, there's absolutely no evidence for giving maths and literacy greater emphasis than they already have in the EYFS. Now this is something we're working on, and we really want to write an article about the EYFS and the changes and kind of along similar lines. So I got to speak to Sue Cowley yesterday, and I'm gonna be speaking with a few more people over the coming weeks to produce a really interesting report about what changes we do need in the UIFS and what we don't need to see when those changes come in 2020. Story number three is a quick update on the reception baseline assessment. This week, we found out that 178 schools have already dropped out, and we're seeing similar kind of reasons as we thought in the past, that there's no data for them, and that they think it's just a waste of time. Um, the DfE have claimed that they've found a link between a previous pilot, between the results in that of reception and the attainment at Key Stage 1. More than a score, the campaign group around the reception baseline have said this doesn't prove anything. This doesn't prove what the government wants to show, which is that these tests can help to show the impact that schools have on children and their progress. Um, if you don't really understand much about this issue or you haven't read up much on it, we had a great article written for us by More Than A Score, which you can find in the description down below. That's it for this week. Hopefully I'll be rejoined by Ruby again next week. But for now, if you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe to make sure you get those notifications when we post a new video. And I'll see you next week. <laughs>